The truth of the matter is that all we have to do is live long enough and we will suffer. One of the major causes of devastating grief and confusion among Christians is that our expectations are false. We do not give the subject of evil and suffering the thought it deserves until we ourselves are confronted with tragedy. If by that point our beliefs, not well thought out, but deeply ingrained, are largely out of step with the God who has disclosed himself in the Bible and supremely in Jesus, then the pain from the personal tragedy may be multiplied many times over as we begin to question the very foundations of our faith. So, quite obviously, ideally, one should develop a theology of suffering prior to suffering so that we are prepared for suffering and sustained in the midst of suffering. We as pastors must prepare our churches for suffering prior to the experience of suffering so when they suffer they do not think it's strange. They do not think it's strange when they suffer. They aren't surprised by suffering. They aren't vulnerable to confusion when they suffer. So that when, not if, they suffer, they are assured in the midst of their suffering that God is sovereign. And that He has a divine purpose for their suffering, even when they can't immediately discern that purpose. We want to prepare those we love and serve for suffering so that they are assured in the midst of suffering that God is present to care for them in suffering, even though they can feel at times as if He is distant or even absent. We want to prepare those we love and serve for suffering so that they are assured of His love as displayed on Calvary. So that they are assured of His love as displayed on Calvary in the midst of suffering. Because in the midst of suffering, those who suffer can have what Owen identified as hard thoughts about God. We need to anticipate that temptation of having an improper view of God. Hard thoughts about God. We need to prepare them with the view of Calvary so they are sustained by His love in the midst of suffering. So that in the midst of suffering, they might experience the words of Spurgeon when he said, so that they might trust God's heart even when they cannot trace His hand. The most effective way to prepare your church for suffering is to preach the gospel to your church. The most effective way to prepare your church for suffering is with the gospel. There is no superior way to prepare your church for suffering or to comfort your church in the midst of suffering than with the gospel. And again, I want to quote Dr. Carson who writes, In the darkest night of the soul, Christians have something to hold on to that Job never knew. We know Christ crucified. Christians have learned that when there seems to be no other evidence of God's love, they cannot escape the cross. He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how shall, how shall he not also along with him graciously give us all things? When we suffer, there will sometimes be mystery. Will there also be faith? Yes. If our attention is focused more on the cross, and on the God of the cross, than on the suffering itself. Here's what I've found. Those who recognize that, that their suffering in this life is never as great or as serious as their sins find joy in an unexpected place in the midst of suffering. Because the great mystery is not why do I suffer? The great mystery is why would the sinless son
Son of God suffer as my substitute on the cross for my sins, receiving the wrath that I deserve so that I might be forgiven and declared righteous. That is the great mystery of mercy. And that mystery can and will make all the difference in the midst of these severest forms of suffering. I have a friend in Covenant Life Church. It's a man my age, recently diagnosed with Lou Gehrig's disease. He is deteriorating before our eyes. His name is John. I wish he was here. I wish you could meet him. If you met him, here's what you'd experience. There's no cure. Last time I was with him, he's describing for me in detail what it appears will happen to him apart from divine intervention. There is this unmistakable joy. He actually is referencing his future suffering. In some ways, humorously. And I'm, I'm staring at him through tear-filled eyes and I'm thinking, Lord, there is no other explanation for this man's trust in you, the absence of questions and any trace of anger. There is no other explanation for this joy, this man seeking to make me laugh, this man seeking to comfort me in the midst of his suffering. There is no other explanation than the gospel of Jesus Christ and the reality in John's heart that his most serious need has been met and resolved at the cross. And that is sustaining his soul in a pronounced way as his body deteriorates. What's made the difference? Please, please, please do not wait for your tragedy, your suffering to get your theology straight. It will help you. This is Wretched.